based on that last sentence, it talks about illegal immigration from Mexico and Central America due to the fact that they're foreign countries, right? So we have a current president. What is it that he's trying to build? He's trying to build a wall. And that wall is supposed to do what? Stop this stop immigration. Illegal immigrants. And then you have agencies like the Border Patrol, right? And what's their, what is their sole purpose as a job? So, so stop, stop people from coming in. So we want to stop people from coming in, right? So we got to lose jobs, right? So it's money motivated. So let's take a look for your notes. Is what you need to know is how does this act compare to the one before the one that we just looked at so in there it tells you how does it appear how does it compare to the back uh mccarran walter immigration and nationally act of 1952 so how does it compare to that and also look it was at a rise, it was a rise in immigration and the act allowed far greater immigration from european nations if you look at the middle line, it says the act allowed far greater immigration from uh, Eastern and, and Southern Europe. So it's not just Britain, Germany, and Ireland. It's multiple parts of Europe now that they're allowing immigration to. We're not just taking pretty much crop. The other ones that they consider to be superior. And also, it talks about preference. That's very important. You're putting a preference on something. If you go to the car lot and pick a car up, right? Do you have a preference in color? Yeah. Right? What color would your preference be? Red. Red. White. Blue. White. Black. Black, right? So you go to the store, you want to buy some shoes, you have a preference on what you want to buy. So the United States has this land, right, of immigration, uh, the land of the free, where we allow immigrants to come, or as you can see, we'll limit how many can come, right? They have a preference. Based on this act, what was their preference? Also, be in your notes. So you had to either have a relative in the United States, right, or you had to have um, a valuable occupation skill. So that being said, so I mean that that is a testimony of, of actually real life what happens. In our particular region, in fact, because we're from Miami, right? We're one of the hotbeds for immigration, right? So the next act. So as you can see, we're going downward. If you look at it, it talks about how the number went down from 156, and now it's down to 120 per year. So now we're going downward compared to the last one. We're right here. Now we're even lower, right? So we're at that middle point, right? So if we look at the next, the Refugee Act of 1980. Refugee Act of 1980, all right? I gotta follow, I'll read this one. It said, this law uh, gave special status to refugees. This is people fleeing persecution in their native countries. It allowed an additional 50,000 refugees to enter the country per year. The president could also admit an unlimited number of refugees in emergency situations. Wet foot, dry foot. Wet foot, dry foot. Uh, it's in regards to immigration of Cubans, right? I don't want to say a preferential group, but of Cubans compared to another group we have in Miami, which is another group we have in Miami, Asians, right? So I mean, the, the law is kind of tied directly to that, but. Where do you see Asians? What's up? Asians. What's up? 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 What's but it goes directly into this. It's legislation, right? And it's about immigration, so it goes directly into this. So, take a look at this, the Refugee Act of 1954. What does it say that we can do now in this act? Is it allowing people to come? It so, so how would that affect the graph? Would the graph start going upwards or would it go downward? Uh, up, so if you take a look at it from here, right, we're right here. But now we're allowing refugees now, this is going to send us back in the right, well, in the upward direction. So we 
we peaked right at 15%. Now we're down here to 5% of being foreign born in the United States. Now we're actually going back up. So now we're, we're getting at six, seven. We're getting hot. We'll see what we end up as of today, right? So next act, Immigration Reform and Control Act of 1986. This is getting closer to it's an odd time. So if we actually go ahead and read this. It says this act legalized all illegal aliens, right, who have been in the United States continuously since 1981. So if you were a legal alien, which is important for your notes, if you've been here since 1981, you are now legalized. Right? Its purpose was to deal with the problems posed by massive illegal immigrants. To discourage further illegal immigration, the law imposed penalties on employers who hired illegal aliens. Do anybody in this class have a job? Anybody ever had a job? Me. You? Okay, so when you actually work, they ask you for certain documents before you actually start. What are those documents? And why do you think why do you why do you think the job asks for that? They need proof that you're a citizen that you can actually work here. Because directly with this act, they say they try to cut out the illegal immigration. So therefore they try to cut out employers who hire illegal immigrants who can pay them a little bit less, right? you guys understand that concept. What did it do for illegal immigration? What this act do for employers? What mandate did it put on them? Also, who did it actually legalize? Okay, keep going right now. This one is a big one, Immigration Act of 1990. Can I get a volunteer? Yeah, this thing, I'm sorry, I want this song. This song this should, should be the case that you're on 400. <coughs> Legal Immigration Act Reform and Immigrant Responsibility Act of 19, I mean, the Immigration Act of 1990. Alexis, on you. Immigration Act of 1990. Attending public school, that should be for your notes. 
or receiving other public benefits. Yet the U.S. Supreme Court had already overturned a similar Texas law barring undocumented children from attending public school in Prior v. Doe, 1982. The provisions of the Proposition 187 were therefore overturned by federal um, district court. Based on the provision of Proposition 187, Congress passed this new act, aliens or foreigners unlawfully present in the United States for 180 to 364 days. What's important about that time frame? It's less than a what? Less than a year. Less than a year, correct. Had to remain outside the United States for three years before could they before they could re-enter as legal immigrants. If they were unlawfully present for more than 364 days, they had to remain outside for 10 years. This law also expanded the definition of terrorist activity. It's important to understand that immigrants and terrorist activity go hand in hand. So terrorist activity as a basis for deportation. It further permitted secret evidence to be presented at deportation hearing. They got some information about you in secret. They present it at your hearing of whether or not you should get deported. So what's important here? What did the Proposition 187 try to do? So they try to prevent illegal immigrants from attending school, right? So no education and other health benefits, right? So if you're over there in another country, somebody in that country, for instance. Mexico. Mexico. Okay, let's go to Mexico, right? And let's say you don't like your life in your country, right? And let's say you had kids of your own at this time, right? And the country that you want to go to, most people come to the to America for what? Better opportunities, right? Do you think you're getting a better opportunity if you can't uh, be provided with education? No. Right? So this can kind of make people want to stay in their own country, right? Okay? So going to the next one. Homeland Security Act of 2002, right? In regards to immigration, in regards to terrorism, there was something that happened in 2001, which was what? 9-11, right? So in 2000, if you look at the bottom, it says, and it's very short, the Immigration and Naturalization Service, right? Which was, what act created that? What act created the Immigration and Naturalization Services? Um, so in 1952, this act created this, right? But it was replaced 50 years later, due to 9-11 by three agencies, and it was now part of the Department of Homeland Security. So that's important, the Homeland Security Act. Police, Immigration and Naturalization Service Act, and it directly relates to terrorism as a whole, the events that happened on 